you like dinosaur action figures, you are in luck. We have two of the new Saurozoic Warriors by Boss Fight Studio. Uh, this one is a Big Bad Toy Store exclusive. It's a color variant in like a black skeleton type style, which is pretty awesome. I was very excited when I saw these came out. I pre-ordered the two of them. And depending on how I like them, we will see if I am interested in perhaps getting some of the other dinosaur figures. I picked these two out. Uh, one, the Triceratops, I think is the coolest looking one. So I went with him. And then for the skeleton versions, I went with the uh, Brachiosaur, which was also, in my opinion, outside of the Triceratops, the coolest looking one, because I couldn't get two of the Triceratops. That would be silly. You would need at least three. So this is from Boss Fight Studio, and here's another Boss Fight Studio figure. This is the Bucky O'Hare series that they did, which was kind of a revival of the old Bucky o hair line. Uh, interestingly enough, Bucky O'Hair was a character created by Larry Hama, who did a lot of the uh, G.I. Joe comics and created a lot of the G.I. Joe stories. So it's a cool little tidbit of information that I always found interesting. All right, so we're going to open up this guy. And I think I missed that box art. That is pretty amazing. Just looking at that, which means there's probably another cool design on the other one as well. So let's compare those guys. <laughs> yeah, these are a lot of fun. This uh, this is for any of those inbox collectors who kind of put them on the shelves and slide them for space. This is the one you're going to want to go with. That is a cool looking comic style art picture. But back to what's important, the actual figure itself. So let's free our Sorozoic Warrior and take a look at how he is. The cool little background display that he comes with looks like a piece of stone. So this is Triax Skiver. That is his character name. It's going to be very hard for me to remember that, so this is probably the only time I'm going to be saying it. And he comes with a ton of accessories. And uh, looks like how he's in there. I would say these these might not be the best way to keep a figure in there, but uh, they're at least a tie. So we'll just undo those and just ignore that bad joke. And all right, so he's got accessories that plop right out. So we've got, well, let's move that over to the side. We've got a cool little axe. It's, uh, it's got a handle, it's got a ball. There's a lot of detail to this axe design, which is pretty cool. It looks sharp. And he's got little canister grenades, which are pretty cool. Good for breaking out some fossils. And man, he comes with a, a ton of really cool accessories. So we'll just pop those all out and finish up the accessories. He's got this pretty cool knife going. And he's got a gun. He's actually got two different guns. Usually when you get a figure with guns, little pistols like that, they'll be the same one. So they went above and beyond and they gave him two different guns, which is a nice little added feature. So now we'll take a closer look at his just details and quality. Feels like a nice solid figure, so we got the quality there. The face sculpt is absolutely incredible. Like the bright green really makes him pop, and it looks like we do have an articulated jaw with a kind of phantom tongue. So it does not seem like it's supposed to be open this wide. So there's probably like a max we can go to like maybe there. So the tongue doesn't look weird. So good to know it opens just a little bit. On his shoulder he's got a kind of a soft plastic shoulder pad. And the straps over here are kind of a soft plastic. So it's a good mix of the hard plastic for the figure and some of the accessories are softer. Which means we'll probably have a easier time working with them, getting the accessories in there, and not have to worry about breaking them. But really liking just the quality of the figure overall, and the design is a lot of fun. It's very cartoonish. It reminds me a lot of the Ninja Turtles Triceraton figure, which was a Triceratops, which he was also a brightly colored orange Triceratops, so just you can see why it would kind of remind me he also used guns, so it's kind of that same prehistoric, futuristic character. 
So this one, his arms are pretty mobile um, just for a, a bigger figure like this. And with the arm pads, doesn't really impact the mobility since they went with the softer um, softer material on that. So it, it moves pretty well. So when I was playing with his arms and I put his arms all the way out like that, I put the guns in there and it looks like he is ready for pretty much any action movie where he is surrounded by henchmen and they've all got guns. So he just starts spinning and shooting and oddly enough, he will win. He will be unharmed and all of those henchmen will definitely go down. So I think I'm going to keep him with the guns as far as the figures I'm going to pose him with and display him with. Uh, actually, his elbow here is giving me a little bit of an issue. It's not really bending. So it's going to... Sometimes with some of the newer figures, you just need to kind of break them in. If it didn't work, you could run under some hot water, but I got it moving. So no issues there. All right. So uh, what I was saying before, I'm going to display him with the guns and that means i'll probably have to figure out what to do with the axe and the grenades don't seem like they have a place to go huh so i was playing around with his uh his waist swivel and it just there's a ball in there and, and it could just pop right off but it's a pretty good mobility and i didn't it i didn't put too much pressure to pull it off but i was wiggling it a little bit but otherwise it's pretty solid and his knife uh, it's a little tight fit in there. It's got a little bit of pressure. Probably more pressure than I would have liked, but the more I take it in and out. So it makes me concerned about putting the axe in here. Oh, actually, I don't have to be concerned. They've planned that one. They actually have a little fold over so you can kind of slide it in from the side or put it in from the top and not worry about breaking it. Uh, just looking at them, I'm not a huge fan of that kind of attached if you put it upside down he could like reach over his his back i'm probably not going to display him with that in the holster i'll probably just put the axe in storage along with these grenades but this will be my display version which is going to be with the two guns in his hand and the knife on his waist which is a pretty awesome uh, pretty awesome looking uh, I'm going to try this Triax Skiver, I believe his name is. It's an awesome looking figure. Now, we'll go with number two, which is our skeleton camouflage Brachiosaur. He comes with a pretty cool looking axe. He's got a knife in there. He's got a gun, because why not? And this is a Big Bad Toy Store exclusive, this version. So, let's see. Break him open. So this character's name is Range Brachion, or his name might be Brachion, Range might be something either related to his clan or something. But I did check, the normal version, uh, the non-Big Bad Toy Store version, has the same name. So that is uh, pretty standard for, I guess, this design. And he's got the same backing of him. And we'll just put that over to the side. And we'll just open up his... Uh, now that we know how the figures are put together, we could kind of open them and pop everything out a little bit more efficiently because we don't have to learn the ins and outs of how he's packaged. So he's, he's in there pretty securely, pretty safely. He's also got some wire ties in the back. Then there's one on that gigantic neck. So we'll just undo that real quick. Give him some some neck room to kind of stretch a little bit. Not too much because he will go through the ceiling. Yeah, we'll get his gun out of there. And his knife is all taped in there pretty good. Everyone likes a nice, secure knife. But if you have a knife to free the knife, then you're one step ahead. So now we've got the knife out. And then we've got this ridiculously detailed axe, which has a skull strapped to the top of it. It looks like it's got some mechanical workings of it. This is probably the most detailed looking axe I've ever seen. It's pretty amazing. It's got, and then it's got the like kind of metallic mechanical handle. And then here's his little knife with some nice punching spikes on the end of it. And then just a really cool looking gun. So I'm going to be torn as to what weapons I'm going to display him with because all three of these are actually really cool.
So we might try some out, see how they look, and then go with whichever ones we like the best. But it's not as obvious as the pistols with the Triceratops. So let's get him into the light. It's a little bit harder to see some of his details since he's such a dark figure. So, but we can see that design work of the skeleton paint on him. And he's got a articulated jaw as well. And yeah, it's a just nice looking articulated jaw. And that paint work on the face is just absolutely incredible. It's a really cool looking design. And then even on his body, just the skeleton work to kind of give him that camouflage paint. And he's got a uh, yeah, nice little loin cloth and another soft good kind of accessory straps and shoulder pads. And you can see the, the tie in the back above his loin cloth. That looks like it is to a corset, which of course helps him fit into his evening gowns. So right now he doesn't come with that. That might be an extra accessory, but... Uh, He's ready for it. His waist is ready. And now let's see what his axe looks like in hand. I already know right off the bat the the axe is going to be staying for display purposes. It's just way too cool. So the axe is a keeper. I think it's the skull tied to the top that, that does it for me. It just looks amazing. So then we'll put his knife in his holster on his chest. And then I think he's going to be holding the gun. I think this is probably the the look I'm going to go with. Yeah, he's just a, such a cool looking figure. Just looking all around him, see if I'm missing anything. Just, yeah, the the face detail and the expression on his face, I'm, I'm really liking that. I wasn't sure how much I was going to like the, like the neck of the Triceratops since his head wasn't, or sorry, not the Triceratops, of the Brachiosaur. Um, because he, he wasn't like looking forward at you and it might look weird from certain angles, but no, they've got this, this figured out. This, this looks really good. It's perfect from a lot of angles. It, it stands pretty well. All right. So this gun is actually not staying in his hand too well. Uh, it's pretty loose. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're different size hands, like ones for the ax, ones for this, but to me, the ax fits pretty well where it is. So I'm going to leave that there. So that's not loose which just means that our decision is made for us. We are going to swap out the gun for the knife, and this will be how he's displayed. So he's going to be displayed with the blades. Oh, he's got a pretty cool neck articulation. It moves up and down, and he's got his, his head swivel. And I just want to do a quick comparison to some other figures of similar size. So here is the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, 6-inch scale, another kind of anthropomorphic action figure, which I really love this series. And um, they are a little bit smaller than them, so they're not quite compatible from a size standpoint. And they're bigger than the other Boss Fight Studio Bucky O'Hare figures, which I'm not surprised there. But all in all, I think these could all kind of fit within the same world. Definitely could be using the same stop motions that I'm going to be making. The articulated jaw is going to come in handy when I make them talk in the videos. And just for display purposes, these are amazing. I'm definitely going to pick up more. Thanks for watching.